So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me anything about the NFL, about any player, any team, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you'd like to be part of NFL Questions from subscribers, you just send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. For anybody that wants to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids, uh, and just know that I love everybody on the channel thank you for supporting the way that you do today is another special episode because we are once again featuring our special guest my guy kevin redline so without further ado let's get into All it right, next question came from my guy chris mix from the west wing in la uh he said brian Bigley once said that he didn't like the nfl going from three divisions per conference to four because in a 16 game season it was possible for a team to lose every game against a divisional rival and still win the division with at least a 10 and six record with the number of games now expanded to 17 games. Do you think that it might be necessary to go back to three divisions per conference with the intent of adding up to four more NFL expansion teams to create divisions of six teams each? Oof. No, no. Um, the reason I say that is because just based off of the email alone, that's confusing enough. Um, but I, I just don't think that NFL already has, they have so many different rules and so many different regulations and so many different stipulations and all this, uh, when it comes to the records and the divisions and the playoffs and the seedings and the standings and all that stuff. I just, me, I'm somebody that's like, I didn't even think they should have added a 17th game. I mean, we all know what's coming and we know soon enough it's going to be 18 games, but I'm one of the people that like, if, if it's not broke don't 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 try and fix it and the nfl i know it's a business and businesses are in it to make more money and that's why you had the 17th game so they can make more money more revenue that's more ads more commercial all that stuff um but i just yeah i i don't think they should i don't think they should do that what about you uh while it would be interesting but yeah i don't think they should either and they still trying to recoup money for the past two years <laughs> or from the past year or whatever. So it's definitely not a time to invest in expanding the league. So um, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I don't think it's necessary. Um, it will make for an interesting year if they decided to do something like that. And just to see teams play other teams more frequently, but mm. I don't think it's necessary. Next question came from my boy, Nicholas W. He says, so I know a lot of people didn't really like the Ben Mason pick, but don't you think he could be the insurance policy for Nick Boyle and maybe play early on? We don't know if Nick Boyle would be good to go week one, and the offense took a step back with him missing. Your knee is not supposed to bend that way. Um, He could be, but I, I kind of think that he might be a long shot to even make the active roster um, because the Ravens, they – like he has a lot of competition, man. Fullback position is obviously already set with Patrick Ricard. Um, but I wonder if with them drafting Ben Mason, hmm, could he sort of be like that uh that backup plan for both Patrick Ricard and a Nick Boyer? Because you could possibly start using Patrick Ricard more on defense because they really stopped using him on defense last year. They didn't use him much at all, if at all. I don't even remember him being on defense last year. No, he didn't. I don't I don't think he had any plays on defense. They, oh, you know what? I want to say in that Washington game, I think he might have played on defense then. But anyway, he, he didn't play that much is the point, um, if at all. But I just – I think it's going to be hard enough for Ben Mason just to make the team alone because there are so many – tight ends in that tight end room. Um, it's, it's just, it's a lot, a lot of competition. And Eric Tomlinson, he was no Nick Boyle. He was no Nick Boyle last year, but he did fill in well. Uh, and they re-signed him. Uh, they still got, again, Josh Oliver, who they traded for from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, you got the, like, I ain't even got to go down the list. It's, it's a crowded room. Um, it's a very, very crowded room. But, I, I just I do think that they, whether it's Ben Mason, whether it's somebody else, uh, I do think that they one of the reasons that they have so many tight ends are for just in case policies, as for what if policy, like what if 
uh, Nick Boyle isn't ready, like you said. Um, and who else can be that dynamic tight end? Because we, we have Mark Andrews. We know what he can do. But he could be that much more special if he's paired with somebody else who can be special too. So I just think the Ravens are just trying to really exercise all options uh, when it comes to that tight end position and really just over-evaluate everybody just to make sure they have a plethora of options so they can make the best choice. Um, honestly, it depends on uh, – like, for me, his best bet is if they would bring him on as kind of like – because I know they're not going to run four running backs again. So his best bet is if they – if he can challenge for – that third tight end spot, because I think they may go three tight ends again, just based off of what happened last year. Oh, yeah. Um, try to get that third tight end spot and kind of have a, you know, kind of run with uh, – as, uh, as a fullback as well, you know, to split some of those uh, – split some of the load with uh, Project Pat. Uh-huh. And um, I think that's his best bet. Uh, but – it's so much competition. He'll he'll really have to stand out. Um, granted, no the, the the thing on his side and everybody else's side is nobody at this point from you know just based off the optics, the current optics, nobody really stands out. It's mm-hmm. kind of like everybody. Ha- it's a level playing field. The the whoever performs the best, shows their best, will make the team. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I, that that's something that I'm curious about. Like, I know they're not going to run four running backs again, <laughs> um, but I I am curious if they're going to run another two tight end set or if they're going to run three tight ends. It it it's up in the air. I think with all the wide receivers, they'll probably reduce a tight end and add a wide wide receiver. Next question came from my boy Javo. He said, I was watching 410 Sports talk about our receivers, and I wanted your thoughts on which receivers make the team and who gets cut. Uh, they had a tough decision between Boykin and Prochet on the final spot. And he said, P.S., don't be biased with Boykin because we know that's your guy, LOL. Um, so which receivers would make it? Oh, right now, uh, as of right now, today is May 31st. It's 1036 p.m. So as of right now, the subjects to change by the time you see the video, depending on if the Ravens make some moves or not. But as of right now, uh, I would say Hollywood, Bateman, Watkins, Tylen Wallace, Devin DuVernay, uh, I think those guys uh, are the locks. Um, and I also think Boykin because of his blocking ability. Uh, and I know the Ravens, especially with – how much they run the ball, they really value Boykin's blocking ability. And he is um, – I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago. Like he, He's the tallest receiver on the team. I know height doesn't mean everything when it comes to the receiver position, but I, I just – I feel like he has that upper hand, uh, especially on a James Prochet because Boykin, he's seen the field a lot more than a James Prochet. So he's been out there um, and – he found himself, even though he wasn't getting many targets, he still found himself active every single game, all the time. James Prochet, known for his hands, known for just not dropping, he was early early on, he was a punt returner, but when they got Yannick Ngakwe, that messed up the numbers for him, so he went to inactive. But Boy, Boykin stayed out there. He stayed out there. Um, and James Prochet just pretty much lost the spot. Um, so I, I really think that Boykin would be uh, that last guy, and that's without any bias. Who you think would make the roster wide receiver right here, right now? Yeah, I'm I'm going to have to agree with your list. While I think uh, Prochet would be more valuable in the passing game, like you mentioned with um, with the blocking ability with, with uh, Boykin, it's just it's it's a tough situation. Now, with that being said, we don't have Chris Moore anymore, so it's possible that he could still, you know, all of them included, could still make the team. Um, you know, your list and including Prochet. 
uh, could could make the team because we still had, you know, uh, Chris Moore was a a big special teams guy. So Prochet could, you know, work his way up the ranks through the through special teams. I know that's not probably not what he wants, but uh, his that will be his best bet because as a wide receiver at this point, I don't see him making the team, you know, strictly off of the wide receiver position because, like you mentioned, they showed how much they valued him when it came, you know, when it came to that last spot when they brought over uh, Yannick. And mm-hmm. he was a healthy scratch for the remainder yeah. of the season, so uh, it's an uphill battle for him. And I, I like I mentioned, like I told you before, I like Prochet. Right. Um, his route running hands, I, I think he he would be an asset. But uh, the Ravens would just have to use him that way. But yeah, as far as that, I, I think he he's lowest on the totem pole as far as making the team. Next question came from my guy Marcus M. He said, I want to know what you think about the Ravens Super Bowl hopes. Do you think this is the year the Baltimore Ravens can Lamar Jackson win his first Super Bowl? Hmm. I'll let you start this one off. Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, just like last year and the year before, I think this can be the year. It's just it's all about perfecting the craft. Like they for, for the way they operate, they have to be close to mistake free. Mm-hmm. Um and that could this could be the year that they they do that. It, like one thing about Lamar that I've noticed, you know, when people like to talk about quarterback, he puts in the work. He may joke, he may laugh and be lighthearted, but he puts in the work to get better every year um so with with the tools that they're bringing you know surrounding him with i think this it's a good chance that this could be the year but ultimately they have to uh they they, they got to continue to to perfect that craft and cut out the small mistakes because they that's what hurt him most you know not, not the receivers and all that other stuff it, it was it was the 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 small mistakes. Yeah, I, I I agree. Um, and like you were talking about earlier with the the penalties, the penalties with the, the on the offensive line, and like you said, an eligible player downfield, an eligible false start, holding. Um, it it was just a mess, man. Uh, so that's part of the little stuff, and I think that they have a team that's good enough to win a Super Bowl. Like right now, if they added a certain somebody, I, I definitely think their chances will go way up. Um, my my thing is uh, regular season. I'm not worried about the Ravens in the regular season. I'm not concerned about them at all. But come playoffs, who else is gonna step up besides Lamar and Hollywood? Who who's it gonna be? Uh, how much help uh, are you gonna give Lamar? Is he going to be forced to be have to be Superman? and do it all because that's that's not what they need they need guys that are going to step up in those crucial moments in the playoffs uh and make those plays like last ravens uh their, their last super bowl uh with joe flack on them like anquan bolden he was their number one receiver he was their guy and he did certainly step up throughout the season and certainly in the playoffs but they also had a lot of help from Torrey Smith. They also had a lot of help from Jacoby Jones, both on uh, receiving and with special teams, obviously more so special teams, but he pitched in here and there with receiving too as a wide receiver. And also Ray Rice, he contributed. Bernard Pierce as a backup running back, he contributed too. So they they had these different key contributors uh, at different position groups on offense um, while they had their clear cut main number one guy, other guys still pitched in and they pitched in a lot and they were able to make big plays and be counted on at crucial moments. Um, so who's that going to be for the Baltimore Ravens? And I think that's as far uh, as they'll go. Whoever those people are that also ended up, end up chipping in in them crucial moments. And that that could be a Sammy Watkins, hopefully. Um, with him, the biggest thing with him that I wonder about, how will he stay healthy? 
How long will he stay healthy for? Uh, will he be healthy for playoff time? Because um, he, the the great thing about Sammy Watkins and him being on this roster is he has all the experience in the world. Rashad Bateman obviously doesn't have any experience, but he's a rookie. Wallace doesn't have any experience because he's a rookie. Uh, but Sammy Watkins, him coming in, and Boykin has some experience. Hollywood got experience. Um, Duvernay got ex- a little bit of experience since this his, will be his second year. Uh, but Sammy Watkins, he's been around for a while since 2015, but he's played in every single type of game. He's won literally every single type of game and lost literally every single type of game. Uh, from the highest of the games to the lowest of the games, he's been through everything. So that may be his biggest value, how he can be a contributor to that. So hopefully he can be a part of being that other weapon that ends up stepping up come crunch time. And uh, to, you know, follow up on what you just, you know, with everything that you just said is uh, I think everybody has to to be that additional piece. Um, yeah. Like you mentioned about the 2012 team, uh, our last Super Bowl team, everybody pitched in. It wasn't a point on the team where you could just say, oh, this person didn't do anything, you know, or they're just a waste of a roster slot. <laughs> everybody did something. Uh, and and my, my thing is, is like, for the Ravens to win, we got to be like Mario and Mario Kart. Remember, you would have uh, like Bowser, he was like the big powerful guy. You have, you know, Luigi, who was the speedster, and uh, Yoshi was the trickster, but Mario was all around. He didn't have a weak spot, but he mm. wasn't, he, he, he wasn't uh, the greatest at any spot either. It was all around. Mm. So, like, that's the thing. The one thing that I, I think about constantly is, like, you know, it's one thing to fear one person on the field, or even fear two to three. But when you look at a team and you say, man, each one of them can can do something. I might be able to, you know, stop them 50% of the time, but they they also have that ability to kind of shut, you know, shut down the game. So when you got to look at all points of, you know, all positions at a team, uh-huh. that that's powerful. And that's why that's why I, I asked earlier, like, when's the last time a top wide receiver won outside of the last two years? because most teams are just well-rounded. When you're well-rounded, you know, you're good all around, you're, you're a hard team to beat. Next question came from my boy Isaac H. He said, now that we've had a full season to watch our rookies who are entering their second year as NFL players, how would you rate their performances? Would you change any draft grades from their day one evaluations based on what you saw? So, um, the Ravens 2020 rookies. Uh, Patrick Queen, I would give him a uh, probably a B, not a B plus, not a B minus, but a B, because Patrick Queen, again, they didn't have an off season, but he came in, he started off strong, he started off really hot early on in the season, uh, but then as the season continued, uh, he got a little bit quiet uh, here and there, and then of course he uh, he definitely struggled in in pass coverage for sure. Um, but again, with not having an off season, man, like that, that plays such a big factor, uh, because it's like you going straight to first grade without having been in pre-K or without having been in kindergarten, you didn't get to learn a lot of the basics, uh, before you jump right into the fire. So you got to give these guys, uh, their credit. JK Dobbins, I would give him probably an A. Uh, it might be an A plus, except for them, all the drops uh, or for the, for them passes. <laughs> but um, who else? Matt Abike, uh I'll probably give him like a C, uh, probably like a C plus. Uh, Malik Harrison, kind of hard to judge him because he he wasn't used too often. I mean, they did. I think they really like him. I think they really respect his strength because with Malik Harrison. You saw him here and there throughout the season. Um, but then come playoff time, when it, they came to them Titans, like they brought him out just for Derrick Henry because they know he could rock with Derrick Henry. We, we, they know that he, he ain't scared of Derrick Henry. He, he'll mess with Derrick Henry. So um, who else did they get? They got uh, Devin DuVernay. Um, 
for what he the opportunities that he did get, he was just a kick returner, then he was a punt returner too. Um I probably I, I would I would give his rookie season a C. Uh because it like it wasn't anything special, but at the same time, he wasn't like you. They weren't like, all right, Devin Duvernay, we want you to do this, do that, do that, do that, do that. They didn't really use him that much for Pro Shea. Um, I would almost like I, I almost feel like he wouldn't even be eligible for a grade because he just like wasn't used like at all. Well, he for punt return, he just he was safe at punt return. He doesn't have that explosive speed, or anything that breakaway speed, but he was a safe guy at punt return. But then when they put Devin Duvernay back there, he looked comfortable and he did pretty good, a pretty good job, and he looked explosive. Um, so approach, I feel like he he can't get a grade. Uh, so it's it's very hard to um to judge him. I'm trying to see if I missed anybody. Oh, Tyree Phillips. Um, I give him a C too. Uh, thrown into the fire, just uh the offensive line at that, especially this Ravens offense. Even though it can be predictable, it is it is complex. It's a lot more complex than we give it credit for. Um, who else? Uh, ben Bredesen, he didn't play. Broderick Washington, he didn't really play. Uh, oh, and Geno Stone. Wow, I forgot that he was they, they drafted him last year, but they they cut him and then he went to the Texans. So I don't feel like he should get a grade either. But how you feel about the uh, the guys heading into their second year and how they did in two thousand? Um, uh, my bad, I mean, cut you off. But um, yeah, as far as so, I'll start off with uh, Patrick Queen. Um. And as far as like the grade, I, I didn't have an in, initial grade. I I don't follow the college players because the one year I did, I can't remember. I can't remember what year it was. I was all hyped about all the players that we got, and they didn't really turn out to be anything special. So I just kind of graded them, you know, as I watched them. And mm -hmm. just like you, uh, Patrick Queen came out and impressed me. I'll I'll give him a C plus. Mm -hmm. Um. Only because at time you know the the pass coverage and at times he allowed himself to get bullied mm. a couple of a couple of times, a couple of notable plays um where he where he got bullied. But other than that, he was he was great. You know, it, it seemed like he was comfortable, even though this was a whole new situation and it wasn't the yeah. off season. Um for me, uh let's see the next guy. Um JK. JK, I, I I give JK an A. He came in and he was a bully to some people, you know. Like he came in and did his thing as if he was the old number 27, you know. It yeah. brought brought back some memories. So yeah, I, I definitely give him an A. Um Tari, oh, oh let me let me get the two wide receivers out the way, because um Duvernay. For what he did and, you know, for him to not get that many opportunities and for him to get the uh, that that run back against the Chiefs, I'll, I'll give him a B minus. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's between that and a C plus because, as you mentioned, he had a couple of drops, but, I mean, he was an anxious rookie that didn't get many opportunities. So I'll I'll give him a curve on that one. Um Proche, I can only give him an A for effort because he didn't get that many opportunities. Ah. Um, Malik Harrison, when I when I know when when I did see him, um, and when I heard his name called, it usually wasn't for a bad for anything right. bad. So mm -hmm. I, I I'm comfortable giving him a a, a a B minus as well. Okay. Um, am I missing anybody? Did I, did I say Tyree Phillips? Yeah, Mad Matabike. Oh yeah, Justin. Uh, so it, it's kind of hard to really, you know, grade him from from my yeah. perspective because you know much of the beginning he was injured. Uh, right. I think he missed what four games or something like that. But when yeah, he was out like there, three four games. Mm -hmm. Uh, when he was out there, he was what I what I remember him as as far as like. Really watching him, I think it was when Calais Campbell was out or Brandon mm -hmm. Williams. Somebody was out, and I was like, "Man, he he's doing his thing. He's not just getting pushed around mm -hmm. as you would expect from a rookie." So I'll I'll give him a B. All right, last question on this episode. A question from subscribers came from my guy Rainmaker. He said, "Ain't hey, Graven. I'm not sure when you'll get to this question, but today is May 31st. 
I got a question about the Ravens and Julio Jones. And when we were recording this, is May 31st as well. When you'll see this, no clue. Um, he said, do you think the Ravens are waiting with whatever cap space they have left just to see if they can be competitive in the Julio Jones sweepstakes? I'm not sure how much space they have left, but for them to base it off of being if the price is right means that they can realistically be a team in the mix. I'm not sure how much they would be willing to give up. Maybe a conditional second and Atlanta eats three to five mil off their salary if just to get him out of the conference. It's possibly a dream, but just wanted your thoughts on the matter. Take care of you and the family and be well. Appreciate it, Rainmaker. I just, I, I think right now, I don't even think, if the Ravens are interested and they gave an offer, we, we, we won't even know till after the fact. But I don't even think it would be the Ravens that would be waiting. I think it would be Atlanta that would be waiting to see what type of offer they can get because I'm sure they, they leaked that story about, oh, they have a potential – they have a first-round pick. Uh, they have a first-round pick that was offered to them for Julio Jones. I ain't believe that story. But what that is is just a way to sort of drive up Julio Jones' market and try to get teams desperate, like, oh, somebody gave up or offering a first-round pick. We got to step our game up. So that helps Atlanta get some nice draft capital, and it'll help them unload Julio Jones. But – I just um I, so I, to answer your question, I just think it's the Falcons really waiting, not even the Ravens or any other team, but I think it's the Falcons waiting so they can really drive up uh, Julio Jones market and try to get the most that they possibly can for him. What you what you think about this whole Julio thing? And is, do you think it's the Ravens waiting to really make a deal? They hold it back, or what? What do you think is going on with the Ravens and Julio Jones and the Falcons? Um, if the Ravens are waiting for anything, they they're probably just waiting to see what others are offering and then determining if that's too much for their taste or they can throw their hat in the ring and see what happens. Um, uh, again, I, I don't think that they're too pressed. They like, if it happens, great. If right. not, it's not the worst thing that ever happened. Yeah. It's not like they're in a the position they were last year when they actually kind of needed something more than what they had, you know. <laughs> It's, it's that 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 desperate uh, disparity isn't there this, this, this time around. <laughs>